Well, you know. I don't want to close that. I keep instinctively closing stuff behind me, but I want to be able to find that place. Yep, that was a good lie down. Had herself a little nappy nap. Hey, buddy. Welcome to the party. And thank you for everyone who has been tuning in, who's been lurking, chatting, following, subscribing, doing the bits, the donos, the hosts, the raids, all that good stuff. It all helps, and I really do appreciate it. I do hope you all are enjoying the stream. It actually has been like a really interesting night stream wise, because like, you know, I've, I've had a few a few small raids and all that, which is cool. But like, a lot of people kind of, you know, just showed up and I'm like, oh, I wonder where everyone came from. Because it's, it's, it's neat. Hey, Raging Baka, how's it going? Because like, that's the thing that gets interested when I have like a bunch of new viewers show up and it's not like from a raid. I'm like, huh. You know, like you start towards like, so what was the thing that brought them there? Were they were they searching for Project Zomboid and you know saw my stream and popped in? Like, did someone else in their stream like plug my stream? Sometimes you can figure it out after the fact because like, Twitch does give us some information about like, you know, some percent of your your viewers came from like this other person's channel, that kind of stuff. But in the moment, it always makes me curious. Zidian says, I haven't found a single hunting knife in my current run. 12,000 zombies, or 12, yeah, 1,200 zombies killed. Um, 10 days. There are just some time, like, we actually had pretty early on that we had like very little luck with hunting knives as well. I think they might be like the katana where there is like a certain amount of time that has to go by before they show up in your world. I don't know that at all as like any kind of fact, but just with how I've not seen them, it makes me want to think that. Gotcha. Laura Rose says, I was looking at the PC category and you were one of the few streams with a chill vibe. Yep. Oh, crowbar. Oh, crowbar. It's been so long, friend. Friend. Weirdly, the graphic on you for some reason looks like the um, the staff that Tuscan Raiders hold. I don't know why, but you know, it had like this weird artifacting going on. But sure. So, do I start busting open these, because the crowbar is usually my weapon of choice for going through these storage units and breaking open the doors. I hadn't planned to, but a zombie was like, yo, crowbar? Yeah, the reason why you choose the axe or crowbar, or the sledgehammer for that matter, if you have a sledgehammer you can just right click and choose destroy. Yeah, I mean we're starting to get some pretty high, um, pretty high, uh, long blunt weapon. Get ourselves a keytar. All right, let's talk books. No, nope, not what I want. I want expert tailoring. 
Uh, the downside is that does use quite a bit of stamina. So we opened those two. We're already we're already feeling the burn. So we're just gonna walk over here, sit down, have ourselves a little react, little little relax. I can words. Yep. No, the um, the three weapons I would recommend for it is one the sledgehammer because you just right click and choose destroy and then the door is gone. Um, that's your best option. Um, after that, you have the crowbar because it does decent damage, but like it's got you know such ridiculous amount of durability, you can just beat on the door to get them all open. Um, and then the fireman's axe is, I believe, the one that's best damaging for it. So you can run up and just uh, fireman's axe it. Oh, hand axe is good too. Yep, so he made a bunch of noise, so no surprising. Some zombies are like, hey, what's up? Let's check out this noise. Yeah, and I'm not going to try and break open the one with the zombie actually banging on the door. I'm just going to let the zombie do that. Mostly because I could hit it and there's more than one zombie and then bad things happen. Alright, just a folding table. But uh, each one of these units can be all sorts of interesting things, so it's kind of playing the lottery. <laughs> yep. It, it can be kind of all over the place. Like, that's the thing. Sometimes you'll get lucky, you get really good stuff, and other times you'll be just junk. Like, they're not amazing. Like, the big thing that's nice about them... Okay, that's cool some parts. So like the big thing that's nice about them is you know you can find generators, you can find books. But yeah, if you're trying to go for like books or something specifically, it's not worth coming here for books specifically unless you've already gone the other places like the bookstores and whatnot. But I mean, I generally agree that, you know, usually outside of generators is usually a better place to go. I may not break into all of these, like, it's taking a long time. Like, it's not terrible or anything, but I don't really care about what's in these. And you get a lot of them that are just empty like that. So instead, we might just go back to Smash and Zombie. Like I said, every time I'm running through these areas where I'm not sure how safe it is, I'll run out. That way, if there's a zombie there, I'll shove the zombie out of the way. So I don't have to worry about guessing the right side the zombie might be on, that kind of thing. Because if you guess wrong, you die. Well, you potentially die.
Alright, so I'm not going to go wandering around too far in the dark. Let's grab our car and start moving around. Uh, is overweight bad for combat? If you're talking about where I'm carrying too much, uh, like the fairly heavily load and all that, um, yes. Fairly heavy load isn't that bad, but when you get to like heavy load and higher, it's it gets really bad real fast. Now, if you're talking overweight, like your character weighs too much, it doesn't, like in my opinion, it doesn't make an appreciable difference. It's like the fitness and the strength is the real thing you're worried about. Yeah, heavy load, you don't want heavy load. Fairly heavy load is okay. Uh, fairly heavy load and higher um, begins to penalize a lot of things. It'll also um, make you burn your stamina much, 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 much faster. Yeah, it still has some penalties, it's just fairly heavy load is, the penalties are very, very minor. So zombies over there as well, so I'm trying to get them all to one side of me. Yep, so we're just going to stroll around the neighborhood killing zombies till we stop seeing them. Big horde up there, they aggroed, so let's back up here to where we know we've cleared. Uh, another tip for people who are new to the game is one kind of rule I have for myself is always have an exit. Basically, always have a plan for how do I leave if things go wrong. Um, earlier in the stream, I wasn't doing a good job of that when I was trying to push into this place because, like, my leave was to walk the whole way home, but then I wasn't leaving myself enough, like, tiredness and stamina to really, you know, do that safely. But. Keeping, keeping an exit strategy is good, because then when, you know, you hop in and you see, like, the bathroom door kind of, like, come down as, like, ten zombies start beating on it, you're like, oh, let's go, and just run out the door real fast. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons why I don't skip hordes if I can help it. Um, one of the things you'll find is a lot of people, they'll make their first couple characters, they'll fight around, they'll try and do something, go, oh, fighting is hard, let me try sneaking around. Uh, the problem you'll run into is if I skip a horde, I'm just going to actually pause. So, like, let's say I'm trying to get over here. So I'm sneaking around, there's a horde down here, there's a horde over here, there's a horde over there, and I'm sneaking through and I'm getting past them, and I get over here and there was a horde around this corner I couldn't see, and I aggro. Now I end up running back. And now I'm not being quiet, so now I've aggroed all these hordes, and suddenly I have a ridiculous number of zombies on me, and things have gone south fast. 
So generally speaking, when you can, it's a good idea to try and just clear the zombie, because a zombie that is dead can't spot you later, because it's dead. Now there are exemptions where it's like your character's just in a bad way, you can't realistically fight, stuff like that. And those things happen and you sometimes just have to try and sneak around. It's just, you don't want to depend on that as your go-to always. Let's recover some stamina. I saw some zombies, at least one or two down here. They certainly are. Desert boots are my favorite boots in the game. Alright, and normally what it'd do is I felt safer we'd be yelling a lot. Uh, no, so when you look at... So some clothes, let's see. I aggroed some zombies. Alright, so I got a zombie behind us. I'm gonna shove him. Like I said, just run into him. He'll shove him out of the way. Um, again, don't do that. There's two or three of them. Because basically what happens when you shove the zombie, it puts you slightly off balance, which is okay. But if you shove like two or three zombies when you're off balance and you shove a zombie, you have a high chance of tripping and falling, and tripping and falling into zombies gets you killed. Yeah, I was gonna say, I believe I have some clothes on that has penalties to them. Yeah, so that's a run speed modifier. So just to be clarified, when it says run speed, it's not just flat movement speed. It's very, very specifically running. So it's like, where you go when you hit shift and you do your little jog, and I believe it'll also do if you hit alt, which is like when your character's like full-on sprinting. So yeah, that's not that big a deal. Like in my mind, people, like I know a lot of people is like, oh no, that does a, that does a penalty to your running. I want to run it even faster. I'm like, do you? You, you run? Why do you run? That uses your stamina. Stamina is life. And I get it, there are people who absolutely run around, and that's that's fine. But generally, because I almost never run, it's like, oh, so I make the thing I almost never do not go as well? Yeah, yeah, check. Why are you running? Oh yeah, the only things that can be really problematic in combat is I believe some of the firefighters' clothes will have a um, a combat speed modifier. Leather jackets, I believe, have a combat speed modifier. Uh, so those ones are are a problem. Yep, you just gotta watch ones. They'll be they'll actually say like combat modifier or something like that. Like you'll you'll. You'll see very specifically that they penalize. I don't have any clothes that wear that because I'm I'm not taking a combat speed modifier. I will not take a penalty, my my fighting abilities. Because this character is gonna be fighting. Yep. Leather jacket is a very minor one. Um there's a there's I think like three or four different pieces of clothing that go into different slots. I think I think it was the firefighter one that had like one of, it's maybe the cut firefighter jacket. Yeah, the regular jacket I don't believe has a modifier. I like to use the um varsity jacket. Cause uh 
the defenses it offers, and it doesn't have that penalty. Yep, so you saw there for just a second, we were targeting the one getting up, not the crawler. I personally disagree with that decision. It's fine, but that's why I like the green outline. It didn't change my strategy there because I had to back up from the other zombies, but there are cases where I've seen that where I've said, like, no, don't, like, this is how I get my ankles munched. Don't want it. Oh, yeah. Stamina. So, yeah, that's part of the reason I'm walking around. We're aggroing some of the zombies in the trailers. Still smash the windows. I don't plan on staying in any of these trailers or anything, so I don't really care. Oh, yeah, we can just compare right here. It's like leather jacket. Yep, so 90.97 combat speed modifier. But yeah, for me, I want absolute max speed with my combat. But I mean, this whole character is combat. Uh, Nirida dropping a weird flex. Getting rid of those heavy points. Don't want to get exerted. Getting exerted gets you killed. Get rid of those points. Weird flex is best flex. Okay, so we're still still doing good on our uh, our stuff here. I did notice there's uh, stuff there. Get the fishing out of here. Paint those in this. Get those out of here. Put the welding mask away. Don't need it right now. Don't need those bullets. Don't need those bullets. Don't need the shotgun shells. I think we're almost getting to the point I have enough shotgun shells. It's getting pretty close to time to actually bust out the shotgun again. Probably do that the, uh, hey, I am making a salad. Leave me alone. Look, Dr. Ellen has gotten absolutely swole, and her secret is eat lots of salad, collapse skulls. That and stabby, stabby, stab, stab. Yeah, it does seem like that happens, um, Zidian, where it's like, okay, uh, Zidian says, P uh, PZ messing with me. I got another, th another hunting knife, three zombies later. It, it does that. You'll be like, oh, I'm getting nothing. Like, we had two katanas we got, like, within 30 minutes of playing. All right. Nirda, you, uh, you sleep well. It is a reminder for everyone, uh, new and who hasn't heard yet, um, where Nirda and some of the others, like, Moon and them might call me Marcus. That is not my real life name. Um, this channel actually started on GTA... Uh, GTA RP, where he played a character, Marcus Soft. Uh, so, that's just the name that they constantly remember me as, is just Marcus, because of that RP. Um, I don't do it much, in, like, I don't really do it anymore, but that's just background. Because originally I hadn't planned on, like, streaming to any real audience or anything. It's just, I had some friends I was RPing with, they weren't going to be able to play one week, I was like, well, you know, you're feeling left out, I can stream it. You know, so that way you can, like, enjoy it vicariously and all that. And I did that first stream, and then I basically haven't stopped streaming since. It was just one of those things that, like, it went from, you know, I was never expecting to have more than, say, like, 10, 12 people on my stream at any given point, till, uh... You know, I was I was on the fence of being like able to hit affiliate, which for the record is like I think it's three average no, it was five average viewers. It's like really not not that much compared to now. And I was struggling hard, like at the fence of that for a while. Um, trust and raided me while I was playing Project Zomboid and then just blew up the channel. Oh, no pixel is nuts. I I didn't play on no pixel. Um, oh, they did a whole zombie invasion on the server. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I played on the uh, the server. It's called the Squad RP server. Uh, so TSRP. Um, 
know, had a lot of fun there. Uh, so some of the other people that I, I streamed with there, like, and when I say streamed with, the people wouldn't know me individual. They were other individuals on the server that I RP'd with. It's not like we had a like, personal connection or anything like that. But Minion777 was one of the more, but like, he was probably the best known person on that server. So I had the pleasure of RPing with him a good couple times. Because he was a, uh, a business owner in the town, and um, my character was a reporter who reported on business owners. And so while I expected to interview someone else that owned the business he owned, because it was like a four-way partnership, I ended up, like, they're like, oh no, uh, Norm, who is Wade's character, can, uh, can do the interview. I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. Like, I was not anticipating being in front of, like, literally thousands of people. Thanks. It went well, and I was very happy it happened, but it's just kind of funny. But I, I had a lot of fun. Like, I actually, that was my first time, like, really doing any kind of RP. Any, any meaningful RP, because usually when I RP, it was just like... Like, like I had done on a character here in um, Project Zomboid, we had a character that... We were just doing a, a cryogenic winter mod, which is where it's like negative 100 or negative 90 degrees Fahrenheit certain nights and all that, like just absurdly cold. And we kept finding friendship bracelets, so we were just collecting all of the friendship bracelets and like writing friendships. So it's just like a gimmick that we were collecting all the friendship bracelets. That's the kind of stuff I did outside of that RP. Like that was what I would normally do RP. Our character didn't have a backstory, didn't have anything. They just had a weird quirk and we just went with it. Or like, I've had characters who've collected rings and stuff like that. But that that particular server was like actual, like, proper hard RP kind of thing. I had fun, though. But yeah. I don't, I don't RP anymore on the stream. It does, like, it's sadly, it just really does, I mean, one... I was kind of burned out on it. And the second thing was it also doesn't fit the channel format at all. Because, like, the, uh, the GTRP server was on, like, had both, like, like, it had the, the whole crim and police thing going on, but also had civilians, like, on a much major level. Um, and as a result, what ends up happening is just... The civilians effectively end up getting bullied by the um, the crim stuff, which which is fine. It got over over the top sometimes, but it was fine. But um, it does make for like high tension a lot of the time because you know you're being mugged or bank robbery or whatever, or there's the new serial killer in town or whatever whatever the thing is that's going on, and it's like okay for a very chill channel. Uh, having a character that people watch basically stress the heck out or, you know, effectively go in denial about all these terrible things going around them. Not really, not really a good fit. Gonna, gonna be honest there. But I already basically wrapped up by the time we started getting popular. It's also one of the reasons why usually when I wrap up for the night, I will uh, almost always try to raid someone. Um, usually preferring to raid smaller channels more than anything. I do have some that I will, uh, like if I don't have a chance to like, properly go through and say, okay, let me find someone who is having a chill vibe. Or we just, we look around at three or four channels and I'm like, I can't find anyone who's like a chill vibe right now without taking like half hour or whatever it is. Instead, I might raid someone who's like, I know this person's chill, we'll raid them. Or if it's someone, you know, who support the channel, like, through their own raids and all that for a while, it's like, hey, I want to return the favor. Like, I'll do that too. But, you know, it's kind of trying to pay it forward that I don't think people would have found my channel had it been for trust in doing that first raid. So I want to help someone else have the same experience where you know, hey, you're doing good, you're just, people haven't found you, let's just drop 50 people on your lap and, uh, get you going. Help you get affiliate or whatever your goal is.
from the sidebar. Interesting. Like, that. that is one of the things that, like, I do wonder a lot of times where people find the channel from, because I know a lot of it comes from raids. I would probably say the most of the viewers that join my channel...